So I spent hours <laughs> learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to my channel. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to organize your watercolor palettes. As you may know, if you've watched this channel for long enough, I love watercolors. I love gouache. I love being in art stores. I love buying art supplies. <laughs> I love painting. I love it all. Like I really do enjoy it. I quickly discovered that I prefer to work in watercolour pans than in tubes and if you are the same then this video is most definitely for you. If you're not you still gain something out of it. As always I will link everything down below in the description so don't forget to check that out. In pretending to organise my life so that I can move and pack up I realised that there are quite a few things that I had done that either made my life easier when it came to my watercolours or made my life harder when it came to my watercolours. The first thing is organising the colours. I didn't think that this would be a hard thing to do. I thought that it would just be this clearly a way that everyone organises their The order of the colours clearly makes sense to everyone and I just didn't know that order. So I spent hours <laughs> hours looking up at how people like set up their watercolors because the truth is there isn't one way to, and having watched hours and hours on YouTube I have concluded that everyone likes to do something different right and there isn't a right or a wrong way to do it there is just a way that will make more sense for you personally depending on the colors that you have what you're painting and the palette that you have that that is the big secret that is it now in terms of me when I reflect on my palettes and I looked back the order that seems to make sense to me is for some reason always starting with yellows and then moving from yellows to oranges to reds to purples to blues to greens to neutrals and then greys and if I have a black a black too. One way or another that's generally the order that things will go in. If it's not in that order will it break me? <laughs> no um <laughs> I will survive but that is the general order that I, I go in almost like a weird rainbow so that's the way that works for me but you will see some people that like to do literally the rainbow colors so they'll start with the reds and move onwards you'll see some people will like to have neutrals first it just very much depends on the colors that you actually have in the palette whether you're doing it for landscapes whether you want your cool colors together your warm colors together etc 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 I suggest that you try out a few different orders and then you stick with the one that works for you and while we're talking about that I just want to take a moment to talk about our sponsors which is me <laughs> let me stop being silly okay so I have loved making YouTube videos I have very very much enjoyed it if you are enjoying this then don't forget to hit the like button and to consider subscribing for more but that being said I have just launched a Kofi site where I will be releasing monthly art challenges creating exclusive videos answering Q's and A's, doing polls and on top of that I have also created a discord so that we have a place to chat together, to share art, to answer questions, to share work in progress and to really just have a group of art friends. This platform will just allow us to talk more, to learn more, to be inspired and to ultimately have a safe art space. If you're interested in becoming a member then hit the link down below or if you would rather give a tip to continue to support the channel then check out the link down below as well. Thank you so so much. I honestly can't continue doing it without you so thank you. I really really appreciate you but that is not it. Let's continue with the rest of the video. Now once you have decided on the order one thing I would recommend doing if you have a metal palette is to just get something like this. These are basically like little magnets that have some tape on the bottom on the other side which you can just stick to the bottom of your pan. I recommend doing this before you put in the paint so that you don't have to wait for the paint tubes to dry into pans before turning it over and adding it. It, it just I feel like it avoids mess. Then add the paint to the pants and once you have done that and this is vital this is the thing that I kept avoiding this is the thing that <laughs> made my life easier when I did it and made my life so much harder when I didn't and that is get yourself a sharpie I got this one from Amazon I'll link it down below it's extra fine and label your pants my friend <laughs> I never thought I was clumsy 
I still don't really think I am clumsy, but what I can say is that I have dropped two watercolors, of which one of them did not have any labels. <laughs> so they fell, they're out of order. And if you have been in that situation or if you don't know how to fix that, I will talk I will talk about how I ended up resolving that issue after. But prevention is better than cure. So just get a Sharpie. I tend to like to write down the color, the initials of the brand, just in case you decide to move that pan into a different set that has some other colors and sometimes I also like to write the pigment information at the very least the color and the brand like oh my gosh it'll make your life so much easier once you've done that the next thing is to create a swatch card now this is very helpful because especially with pans once the colors are dry it's just hard to know what color is what like it's just so helpful to have a little bit of a sheet that has all the colors in the order that they're in essentially a swatch card will help you identify your colors quickly when in the palette especially if you like taking your paints out on the go with you I tend to normally get a piece of watercolor paper, I cut it to the size of the palette, and then I swatch out the colors and write down the names. So if it's a big palette, it's a big swatch card. If it's a small palette, it's a small swatch card. And one thing that I haven't done yet, but I want to do in the future, is to then laminate these so that they are waterproof, especially once I kind of complete a palette. Sometimes I like to add a little bit more detail and also add like the pigment information, light fasteners, whether they granulate or not. I at least have the names of the color and the brand. This is like a little bit extra, but when I asked in the community tab, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised to see that my most of you do have a swatch book and that is my next tip just have a nice swatch book not only is it relaxing to create for some myself included but it is also like good to have a record of the colors that you have to have a list of the information and it sometimes means that if you don't want to write all the information on the swatch card you can just write and consolidate all that information in your swatch book and there is no one way to do it very soon I'll be releasing a video about how I create my swatch books and the information that I put in there as well at the very least I would say have the brand name all the colors the pigment information whether they granulate or not you may want to include some information on light fastness or at least point out which colors are fugitive so which colors will fade so that you're mindful and the way that i create my swatch books for the most part is i wanted to be able to serve me now but also serve the future me like the future artist me who perhaps in in a few years will be like oh yes we'll know all about pigments and want to know that information that is why i write all that now it may not be something that you're necessarily interested in now but is it something that you're going to want to know in two or three years time so yeah definitely consider having a swatch book not only for swatching out not only for writing that information but sometimes it's also nice to like play around with different color combinations is something that I did when I was going to Venice and I wanted to know which reds for example I should carry or which greens I should carry just having a place that you can kind of play with color and experiment with different mixtures is really nice and I find that a swatch book is a great place to do that so what if you're like past me what if you're like the me that didn't label, didn't put magnets and then dropped the palette and now there are 20 colours all out of order? How do you then fix that? And my friend, the answer is with patience. <laughs> Get all the colours out and basically start swatching them. I very thankfully had to swatch the colours out already in my swatch book and that is why I think it is so, 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 so helpful to have them swatched out. So I had swatched them out in my swatch book already so I knew the names from there. I basically got out the pan, swatched it on a separate pe random piece of watercolour paper and then tried to match it up. And once I matched it up to the swatches that I had previously done, I then labelled it. <laughs> I added magnets so they don't, don't fall out of place, <laughs> second, and then I put it in in place and organized and kind of did this video in reverse. If you want to know more about how I create my swatch books, what I put inside and what I think are the best ways to make use of it, then definitely check out the video that will be coming out shortly. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to everyone who's supporting this channel on Kofi. It makes a massive, massive, massive difference. I'll leave the link down below in the description. 
if you are still watching, you are most definitely a real MVP and I really, really, really appreciate you. I hope that you found this helpful and it helps you avoid the mistakes that I make. Let me know that you're still watching by telling me whether you customise your palettes. Are these steps that you also take? Do you do something else that I haven't thought of? Or is this just me? <laughs> Thank you and I will see you next week. Bye. I kid you not, while editing this video and kind of thinking out this video idea, it occurred to me that my 36 pan set, I hadn't done this too. So, and I don't even know where I would have begun to fix it. And as I went to get it, it slipped out of my hand as I grabbed it and I was like, no. but it was fine. And I'm, I've labeled it and everything. And that is why we have B-roll for this video because I hadn't followed my own advice, but now, all my watercolour palettes are in pristine shape.